One of the biggest successes in reality television, Pawn Stars, features three generations of Harrisons running their pawn shop and interacting with random guests carrying some unique and valuable items. From muskets to coins, autographs to vintage cars, the team has the cash and charisma to impress shop customers and TV audiences from around the world. Over the last 10 years, our favorite dealers in one of the most famous pawn shops in the world have made some massive purchases, but some pretty bad judgments as well, leaving their shop short for different amounts of money. The show has had its fair share of heartfelt, humorous, and even intimate moments. However, it has also had its share of tense moments and even some total scammers and unpleasant situations. With that said, let's take a look at 10 Horrible Pawn Stars customers. In the second season episode, Flight of the Chum, one pretty hopeful customer came to the shop, confident to sell a statue of Perseus and Pegasus made by Emile Louis Picoult for a good amount of money. Unfortunately for him, he was faced with someone familiar with Picoult's work, as Rick was aware that his statues were highly collectible and worth thousands of dollars, so he gave the item a thorough look. After only a couple of seconds, Rick became suspicious since he found markings on the statue that did not match the period it was produced in. He also found markings engraved on the statue showing that it had been made in the United States. This was not made in 1888. The original was made in 1888. I don't believe you. Okay, I mean, I just don't see 1800s here. And since the artist is French, this confirmed that the statue was a reproduction. This statement, however, really made the customer furious with Rick, which is why he started screaming that the owner was full of shit. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you tell me, but I know you're full of you know? As the tension culminated, the pawn shop security guard Antoine began walking toward the customer in case an intervention was needed. Luckily, the old man diffused the situation by calmly yet firmly explaining that they were not interested in buying the statue. We really appreciate you bringing it in, but it's not for us. That's all I can tell you. Sometimes the show features some of the really old and rare items, and such was the case when a customer showed up with a shekel of tire in the seventh season episode called Shekel and Hide. The coins are special since they were used in the Middle East during biblical times, while some people even believe they have been used to pay Judas for betraying Jesus. Being aware of the potential value of the item, Rick decided to thoroughly expect the coin. He immediately noticed that the coin had been cleaned as that surely tarnished its value. Nevertheless, after some discussions over price, Rick bought it for $1,600. However, this win is short-lived as an employee informs Rick that the coin may have been stolen, meaning that the $1,600 may have been spent in vain since the coin would have to be returned. The answer might be stolen. They want to put it on hold. The police tracked down the coin's original owner and discovered that the owner's insurance had already compensated him for the loss of the coin, which meant the pawn shop's purchase was legal and they were able to keep the treasure. The first season episode called Time Machines features a man who brought a flintlock pistol he had bought at a gun show. Corey immediately saw the potential for an interesting piece of history and decided to call in an expert in vintage firearms to appraise the value of the gun. Though at first, both Corey and the customer were excited to hear that if the gun is authentic it could be worth up to $2,500, their dreams were soon to be crushed as it turned out this particular gun was not authentic and was just a modern recast of an old design worth about $75. 75 to $100. You know, I paid 800 bucks for this. I'm sorry you, you, you got burned. The customer was clearly upset, saying that the person he bought the gun from told him that it had been a family heirloom for generations. Maybe the thing is a, is a fake. I'm... In fact, the story is what made him comfortable paying $800. Outside the store, the customer says, My wife was pissed when I bought this gun, now she's really gonna kill me. 
Rick is famous for calling in a buddy expert for just about everything, however, sometimes he decides to trust his gut, and even though more often than not his gut turns out to be right, this was not the case. When a seller brought in a supposed 19th century Wells Fargo strongbox, Rick decided to trust his own feeling. Unfortunately for Rick, the box for which he had given $450 was hardly authentic. The seller also brought the box in stuffed with two ball and chain sets he thought were artifacts from the Hume and Folsom prisons. But Rick recognized them as fakes right away, but that wasn't enough to make him check the authenticity of the strong box. When his expert Mark, aka Beard of Knowledge, saw the box, he notified Rick that it was one of the most widely faked items and that the strong box Rick had bought was a complete fantasy piece. This is a complete fantasy piece. It's a complete fake. Damn it, Rick. In 2012, Rick and Old Man Harrison were sued by a disabled Vietnam vet who claimed they roughed him up in their Las Vegas shop a year before. A 62-year-old Daniel Callahan filed a civil suit in Clark County District Court on April 26, accusing Rick Harrison and his father Richard of physically assaulting him in their gold and silver pawn shop in October 2011. Callahan, who walks with a cane, got into a dispute with the gentleman who placed him in a chokehold, dragged him through the store and threw him onto the sidewalk along with the Model 96B rifle he'd brought in to have appraised. As a result, Callahan was asking for $20,000 and claimed that he was injured, his cane was damaged, and the rifle he had brought in to be appraised was also damaged during the incident. The next seller really couldn't control his temper when he was told that the object he brought was worth much less than he thought it was. Chris came to the pawn shop with a piece of armor to protect the throat, a Hudson Bay Gorget. As he was asking $100,000, the old man called Rick to take a look, who quickly realized the worth of the item. He told the seller it was worth much less, precisely $99,000 less than he was asking for. The item turned out to be made from the wrong material, which made Rick's offer quite reasonable, but the customer lost it and refused the offer using some pretty nasty words. However, the guy couldn't believe that as he asked him, Alright, what the f*** are you talking about? When Rick asked the man what he knew about the item, he said not much, but that his father had taken another mortgage on the house to pay for it at an auction. Do you know what he paid for it? A second mortgage on his house. Okay. When vintage sports memorabilia enters the shop, the owners almost always think the day is already successful. Since some pieces could be extremely valuable, imagine Rick's happiness when a customer came into his store with a book signed by baseball player Shoeless Joe Jackson in the sixth season episode called Say It Ain't So. Not only was Jackson a legendary baseball player, but also he was illiterate, which only means his signature is incredibly rare. This is why Rick asked for any documentation that might support the customer's story, and to his surprise, the customer produced a letter of authentication, so Rick immediately decided to buy the book for $13,000. However, a few days later, Rick brought in an authenticator to see if the signature was legitimate, since he hadn't heard of the authenticator who signed the customer's letter. Unfortunately, the expert reported that the signature is likely fake. Surprised, Rick decided to send the book off to yet another authenticator, only to once again get the same answer. <laughs> Great job, son. Pretty much it's a bunch of stuff saying it's fake. Just shut up. Even though being the most experienced one, if we don't mention the old man, Rick has been scammed quite a few times. Another one happened when he decided to buy allegedly pretty valuable gold coins for $12,375 that soon turned out to have been stolen. According to a criminal complaint filed by the state of Nevada, the woman who brought the coins, Jennifer Beckman, had stolen the whole collection from her uncle, David Walters, who valued them at up to $50,000. 
Walters. Walters reported the theft on December 27, 2013, and then on December 5th, Detective Watkins contacted the shop and attempted to place a hold on the coins so they could be returned to Walters. However, there was another problem, as the shop's owners were free to do what they wanted with the coins and they decided to melt them down. Unfortunately, they turned out not to be worth what Walters thought they were worth. In the end, Jennifer was sent to jail and once again Rick got scammed. The next customer came to the shop in 2013 hoping to buy an NBA ring for a lower price than what it was worth. The ring in question was worth $11,000, however, this man claimed it was worth only $5,500. The man was prepared and seemed paranoid as he brought pictures of another 1975 Golden State Warriors ring and compared them, only to conclude that they are the same. He had a plan to pretend to be a professional jeweler and claim the ring to be fake in an attempt to make Rick very uncomfortable so he would sell it to him for a much lower price. He even brought a tester and started inspecting the diamond, but he didn't expect Rick would tell him his tester was cheap and brought his own. But I know this diamond is real. And the fact that this guy brought in his own cheap little tester, I'm gonna be nice. Though Rick was trying his best to keep it cool, it was obvious he was pretty intimidated by the man who was apparently trying to perform a scam. This cocky seller brought in a one in a million photo of Abraham Lincoln and his wife Mary from 1863, and was pretty sure he would get a million dollars from Rick for it, who luckily decided to call an expert and check it out. That turned out to be a good idea since when the expert compared Mary's facial features with facial comparison software, they did not match, so she declared it a fake. However, the seller didn't take the news well, aggressively saying he considered himself more of an expert on the subject than the actual expert. I don't want to be difficult here, but I feel I'm an expert. I look for other things besides just face. I look at the clothes, I look at the background, I check. Yes, so do I. When she defended her record of spotting fakes and continued claiming that the photo wasn't authentic, the seller just declared it was her career, so she had the right to discredit herself. It's not a problem. It's your career. You have a right to discredit yourself. But you know what? But you know, I've been doing this for a really long time. Okay.